All right, guys, so this is the Fractal AX8. And what I like about this unit so far is it's very sturdy and rugged. We got metal all over the place, not a lot of plastic stuff being incorporated into the design. And we got really sturdy switches. And we got tap tempo over here, which is great. So what I'm gonna attempt to do in this video is give you an overview of what I've learned about this unit so far. I have read the full entire manual from front to back, but that doesn't mean I remember everything, but I think I have the basics down pretty well. So you can see right now on the screen, I am in bank four, preset one, and scene one. So that kind of lets you know right up front that this unit operates based off of banks, presets and scenes. And there's a few different ways to set up the AX8 to your own personal needs. So I'm gonna show you how to set up a preset from scratch, only using the knobs and buttons here on the AX8. There is an AX8 edit that you can use on your computer, and that is perfectly fine if you wanna use that. And there's plenty of videos here on YouTube that you can learn how to use AX edit. But me personally, no matter what device I'm using, I like to know the I know I like to know the unit well enough to where if I need to make an edit either during practice or some or sometime during a set or sometime during or sometime during a set that I can just reach down, alter whatever I need to and just be comfortable enough with the unit to fully operate it just from the unit itself without the need of a computer. So the layout is fairly simple. We have some F switches on the right side. So if we hit F1, that's gonna put us in bank up and down mode and I can use F2 and F3 to bank up and down. So F2 goes up and F3 goes down. And you can see I have some banks that I've already made some presets in but I'm gonna to go to bank five. And right now we're in sticky mode to where whichever one we choose, that's going to bring us into the preset. So if I hit F1 again, you can see all the switches start blinking and I can go to a different preset and then the switches stop blinking. In order to alter the function of what the F1 switches do, we need to utilize these buttons right up across the top on the right. And we can see we have store, edit, page, and shift. And in order to get to setup, effects bypass, and page left, we need to hit the shift button. So I can hit shift, then store. That's gonna bring me into my setup. And I have a global, an IO, and a utility. So if I'm on global, I can either hit enter or I can hit the first foot switch down here. Other one works, and you can see under global settings, we have options for spillover, and the E encoder is for navigate, and you can see there's an NAV underneath here. So that kind of lets you know that this is how you're gonna navigate around, or at least up and down between different options. Now usually your A, B, and C are how you alter different things, and then the D encoder is another way to move left and right uh, between your different blocks. So I'll get to A, B, C, and D here in a bit. But right now, you can see across the top, we have different tabs. So right now I'm on the settings tab. And if I hit the shift right button, it's gonna move me over to the foot switch. And you can see right now we have a tap and a hold function for each of these F switches. So right now, if I tap F1, it's gonna be in single preset bank. But if I use my A encoder, I can change that to pretty much anything I want. So I can have it be none. It could be single preset bank, which is what it defaults as. A sticky preset bank. A sticky preset plus up and down. A single scene. Sticky scene. A scene one and two toggle, which is something really cool. I can show you a little bit later. We have bank up and down, tap tempo, tuner, single XY, sticky XY, and looper control. And then we have exit. 
So we're gonna go back to the beginning here. I'm gonna show you the difference between a single preset bank and the sticky preset bank, okay? And coincidentally, if we hold the F1, it's already set the sticky preset bank. So let me show you that. So if I just hit F1, it's gonna allow me to hit any one of these presets. So I'm gonna to go to preset one. But now if I hold F1, you can see the light start blinking. I can just hit any of my presets and stay within that sticky mode. So that may be a way you wanna work. And then hit F1 again, and everything goes back to normal. Okay, we're gonna hit Shift and Setup, and then hit foot switch one for global. We can see F2, tap, is set to sticky scene. Okay, we're not in a preset right now, and we don't have scene set up. So that's gonna function a little bit later. But I do have the F2 hold function set to looper control, which is really cool. So I'm gonna exit out of here. And I don't happen to have a looper in my preset right now. But I do have a looper in another preset, and I can show you what that does a little bit later. So go back to Shift and Setup, Global, and then F3 is for Tap Tempo, and then Hold F3 is for the Tuner. Okay, so we exit out of there. I can Tap Tempo right here. And you can see we have options for Tempo to use, Auto Delay, Metronome, and Metronome Level. So that's a cool way to practice by turning on the metronome and just playing along. So check this out. So there's my metronome on, and there's my metronome level. And that is currently coming out of the outputs one and two, so I can just play along. There's my tuner. So turn off the metronome and that will go back to the normal screen here after a few seconds. And you can change how long it takes for it to go back to the main screen in that setup menu. And now as far as the actual preset and scene switches over here, we can see we have S1, S2, S3, S4, all the way up to S8. And those are the number of your scenes you have per bank and one through eight are your number of presets. Now we also have a Y setting over here, and that's gonna be your X, Y setting for each effect. So imagine you have an amplifier and you have some drives and some delays and some reverbs. You can have an X state, which means any amp, any setting, or any drive, any setting, and a Y state, which can be a totally different amp and setting or a different drive and setting or a different delay and setting and so on. So it's a really cool workflow once you understand the switches and how everything works. We do have a dedicated knob per function for the amplifier section. So we have drive, bass, middle, treble, presence, depth, master, and level. And we do have a independent level for our at one and our out two, which happens to be labeled effect send. And I can show you how to set that up in a preset here in a little bit as well. All right, so with all that out of the way, we're currently on the foot switch tab, which gives us our foot switch blocks. But now I'm gonna use my page button over here and we're gonna page over to the layout. We also have a move tab. We have a controller page. And this is the VU meter page where we can actually set our levels per preset. And continue to page over again, we're back to our layout. All right, so now on the bottom, you can see the A is going to choose our type. The C encoder is gonna choose the scene that we're on. D is left and right, and then E is up and down. So you can see if I just keep scrolling with my E, it's gonna scroll up and down through every single block, okay? But if I choose D, it's gonna scroll side to side through all the blocks we have. On the far left, we have our input and our gate. And our far right, we have our output. 
All right, so starting on a block here, Fractal has a system of basically making a pedal board on your screen and using virtual cables. So that allows you to have a block on the second row, then the next block could be on the fourth row, the next block could be all the way up here on the first row, and just all kinds of crazy routing options. Now, all that is well and good, but you'll notice here very quickly, once we start adding in our blocks, that the DSP runs out pretty fast. We can only have one amp block, we can only have one reverb block, and we can have two drive blocks and two delays. We can have a modulation block. We can have a filter block. But you really can't get too far without running into restrictions on what you can start doing. So and you have to think about what you actually need per song. And if you need to make a totally different preset to make adjustments based on that song. So whether you need a flange or a phase, maybe you need a tremolo or you need a certain drive sound or a certain amp sound, um, you're going to want to think about that ahead of time and then, and then make each preset accordingly. All right, so the first thing that you'll read in the manual, if you happen to read the manual, is we have different options for these blocks. So if I press Enter here, you can see a line was created from the end to the first block. If I press Enter again, we got two blocks that are going to start blinking. What this allows me to do is, like I said before, I can actually move this block to whatever row I want. And then when I press Enter again, it's going to draw a line from one block to the next. So I'm going to press Enter, move up to this row, and now it draws me another line. And I'm showing you that because that's really the basic building blocks of, of how you can start making a preset. But if you don't want to mess with all that, pressing enter and then going to the next block and pressing enter again, a shortcut way of having one long line from the input to the output is simply by holding down enter. You can see it builds your blocks all the way across. So I'm going to use my D encoder. I'm going to kind of find where my middle ground is here. And I'm going to put an amplifier on this block. So now my A encoder is going to choose the type. We can see we have amp, cabinet, chorus, comp, and dynamics. Delay 1, drive 1, enhancer, filter 1, flanger, formant, effects loop gate expression, graphic EQ1, looper, multi-delay, param EQ1, phaser, pitch, reverb, ring mod, rotary, synth, which is a really cool effect, trim and pan, volume and pan, wah-wah, and none. So you can see that these are all in alphabetical order. And the first option is an amp, and that's probably something that we want to choose. So now that we have our amp in the signal path, I can do some playing, and this is what it sounds like. So if you're wondering what that sound is, that is what we call in the guitar world as a swarm of bees. And it's like that because it sounds like it's very fizzy and fuzzy sounding. And essentially, you have an amplifier without a cab in the signal. So what we do now is go to the next block. I'm going to use my A encoder and go to cabinet, press enter. And now with the cabinet in there, it's going to sound like an actual amp. Okay, so don't be alarmed if it's something that you don't fall in love with right away. We basically just have to go in and choose the amp in the cab that we actually want. But this at least gives us the blocks that we require in the preset. Okay, now I can go in and I'm going to go to another block somewhere toward the end here. We'll stay right there. And I'm going to use the A encoder. And we're going to bring in some reverb. Okay, we can press enter. And now this is what the reverb sounds like. Now, from here, 
what we're gonna do, we're gonna go back to our amp. Once we're on a block, you do not wanna press enter. What that's gonna do is blink in between the two blocks and you don't wanna do that. So now if I press exit, it's gonna bring in a shunt on that block, which means it got rid of the amp that we were just on. And that's not what we want to do either. So if you're on a block, you never wanna press enter or exit unless you actually wanna move a signal path from one block to the next. In order to edit blocks, we actually wanna just choose edit. So let me go back and add in my amplifier. And now once it's blinking, you can press enter and you're done. So go into the edit and I'm not sure if it defaults to pre or if that's just how mine has done it so far, but we can use our page left and right to get between different options of the amp. I'm gonna go all the way around till we get back to our type. So the Fractal family has so many amps. I think there's close to 250 amplifiers. So we're gonna go in and we can use our D to go between different rows really fast, as you can see, or we can use E to go one by one. So here is a deluxe reverb with the vibrato channel. I'm gonna go ahead and press exit. And that sounds okay, but let's go over to our cab and press edit. And we have lots of factory cabs available. You can also load in your own impulse responses, but right now it defaults to a one by six oval, which I'm not quite sure what that is, but I definitely don't want a one by six. So I'm gonna use my A encoder and we have two by 12, double amp, uh, all kinds of options here. Here's a double reverb. So let's just choose that one. This is a two by 12. Okay, if we page over, we can see we have some other options. We can choose the mode. Uh, which means we can actually change the resolution or the ultra res. We can adjust our low frequency or high frequency, the proximity effect, which means when a microphone gets really close to a speaker or a source, it has more bass response. So we can adjust things like that. And we can also adjust the level, the balance, and the bypass mode. So that mix page is very, very important for the bypass mode. And I'll show you why when we talk about different effects. All right, so now that we have an amp and a cab and a basic reverb just for some ambience, I can now use my knobs on top of this screen here to adjust the amp settings, which is great. So I'm gonna turn the drive down a little bit to get a little cleaner sound. Okay, and remember that one VU page I was telling you about. This is gonna be a great page so we can kind of see how loud this preset is. Okay, and the line right there, that's gonna be our zero VU area. So I can actually use the level knob right here and bring that level up. It's a little bit too much. So I just want to adjust it enough to where when I pluck lightly, you know, it stays around that bar. But if I dig in a little bit, so it just goes slightly above and that's perfectly fine. Now, any kind of amplifier that does not have a master volume, the master knob will default all the way up. But you can still bring the master down. And what that does for your overall sound is the less master volume you have, the less power amp distortion you're gonna have, which means you can probably turn your drive knob up a little bit more and still have a fairly clean sound. We 
can also use the mids and bring it down, maybe the bass down and maybe the treble up. So that makes for a nice sparkly sound. I'm on the neck pickup on my Les Paul. And here's the bridge pickup. So that's the basics of setting up a preset with just a simple amp, cab, and reverb. In subsequent videos, I will show you how to dial in even more sounds and assign different blocks to the switches and all that fun stuff. So if you want more videos like this, be sure to subscribe down below and click the bell. I am Dr. McFarland, and I will see you in the next video. Keep rocking.